Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another video in the Middle Earth Monday slash Token Tuesday playlist as I seem to be late in these videos more than I would like including this one which is now a Token Tuesday not a Middle Earth Monday but anyway we are continuing on with the Fellowship playlist that we started last week last week we started with Legolas I put it in the comments as to what one I should do next the, the, the votes were all over the place there's no definitive way of picking which one so I thought the actual one I should choose is the pair to Legolas which is of course his best friend Gimli so that's what I'm going to be painting here in today's video before I get into that video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to keep doing this crazy channel. If you would like to get involved with my patron, there is a link to that below. Benefits include private Discord server and an extra video every single week. So that's 52 extra videos a year. For those who don't also know, I do stream on Twitch every single Tuesday and Thursday between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. It is a great excuse to get yourself doing a little bit of hobby with your free time. All right, guys, without further ado, let's get into the video. So just like Legolas, the model was cleaned up and then it was sprayed black and then sprayed gray sear. Gimli is quite a, a small miniature at being a dwarf, of course. So you just gotta take your time with some of his details um, and just get a bit of nice brush control and you will be absolutely fine. So I'm gonna start with Flesh Tears Red, which is a dark crimson like color. And we're gonna use this for his kind of jackety thing it's under a lot of other layers but I think it's the best place to start I definitely went on to some Google images of Gimli himself some hot toys that kind of thing to try and get some 360s to try and figure out where the red started and where it ended there's actually a lot more of this kind of kind of beigey yellowy color leather in him that I thought these are all those bits you can see white uh, in the, the jacket here get to them now with a gross dunes which I think is gonna act as a nice base coat for those um, steps. Uh, previously, when painting the Lord of the Rings miniatures, I used the term potato miniatures, which caused a little bit of confusion for people who are obviously outside of Ireland um, or who aren't you know, familiar with that kind of slang for a miniature. Potato miniatures, it genuinely refers to a miniature that is quite old um, and it's it kind of shows on the miniature. Its details aren't quite as sharp. Bits kind of blend into other beasts. So for instance, behind his axe now, that is fully connected to his arms. There's no gap between his arms. And that's, you know, that kind of reminiscent of the, the day uh, where you kind of have to paint in some of the detail yourself. But if you do put in the effort, you end up with quite a nice result. And that in no way takes away from me the experience of painting these models or collecting them. Um, I love Lord of the Rings. I love the Lord of the Rings miniatures game and I always will. As you can see, I'm using Lead Belcher here to base coat in all of the metallic parts. So he has got a lot of chain mail underneath his leather jacket. Um, and obviously the head of his axe. There's actually, I think, four axes on him. You'd be surprised. They're tucked in everywhere. So make sure you get them all if you are following along with this tutorial. From here, we moved over to Retributor Armor Gold just to get the uh, other metallic details on the miniature done. So there's the head of his axe, and I don't mean the actual head, it's it's more like a casing that goes around the, the haft that connects it to the axe. Obviously there's a lot of trim on his helmet. And then a few other details on other axes. Some, there's kind of a back and forth as to whether the detail on his shoulder pads is painted gold or is leather gold or is gold gold. It's like everybody paints it a different way. So if you so choose, you could paint the inside of his shoulder guards in gold now. I think it would be a little bit gaudy personally um, and it doesn't really suit with what Gimli looks like in the movies to me, but each to their own. Gullum and Flesh was used as a very quick base coat for the, the flesh on the miniature, which is of course just his uh, kind of his nose to his forehead and then his hands. That's the only skin showing on this miniature obviously he's a dwarf so he's quite heavily armored and armed from here we're going to go into Gorgrunta fur and we're going to use this for all the halves of all of the axes and his boots now later on i'm actually going to come back to Gorgrunta fur and do his beard and hair because actually is a perfect base coat for those colors and um, if you're doing this video if you're following along obviously you can do that now i simply didn't realize until later on so You'll see a pointless bit later on where I pull out Gorgon for again and then do his beard. He's starting now not to look like Santa Claus and he's starting to look more like Gimli. Uh, once he is shaded down and the base is blacked in, it will uh, look a lot more like Gimli, I promise. 
leg bare flesh or any nice dark green contrast you can use for his bedroll that hangs off his back. Obviously this is quite pale, but it's fine. I'm gonna be shaving the whole miniature anyway. So here we are going back to Gorgon the Fur again. And like I said, getting the beard, mustache and ponytail that hangs off his back um, done. Or base coated at least. Funnily enough, the Gorgon the Fur on his hair and then when I shade it down, I didn't find a need to do any more work to his beard. Um, it worked out perfectly for me because the model is her isn't heroic scale everything is quite small so all the details just kind of work agar third shade is the shade of choice that i went for to shade every single part of this miniature from head to toe you know his head is not far away from his toes but still agar third shade it works an absolute treat for shading down all these details and like i said in the legless video which if you haven't watched there is a, it's basically going to be part of a playlist so please go back and watch that if you want to get the full experience of the full fellowship being painted up and um, i'm just going to black out the base for now because at the end i'm going to do a beautiful big scenic base and i want them to match in perfectly so i'm going to wait and do all of that at the same time okay time to move over to corn red and this is what we're going to use to layer up his leather jacket jerkin whatever he's actually wearing this i feel is the perfect color to get that gimli colored jacket and reds have always been fun to paint in my eyes they're quite an easy color to paint they lay layer over each other quite well and quite easily giving you nice smooth coats i guess that's why there's so many red stages in so many of my armies like i said i'm going to be very careful with this and I'm just highlighting, so I'm just going for the raised areas of the cloth and leaving all the creases and recesses nice and dark. And from here, we're gonna go over to Tolerant Sand and layer up all those bits we did Egros Dunes um, earlier in the video. So those strips that go around the bottom of his jacket, his shoulder pauldrons, and any other belts and stuff you think might need it. There's another one where I'm taking my time. I'm really just focusing on the center part of those uh, strips. And even the outside is that nice dark shaded tone. Kaylin Flesh Tone was then brought in to bring in a very quick and easy highlight to all of the skin. Basically just tips of knuckles and um, tips of nose, cheekbones, eyebrows. Those kind of bits are just going to get done with a very light coat. From here we are going to go to iron breaker and we're going to use this metallic which is nice and bright to layer up all of the metallics on the model that includes silver and gold like i said as individual models none of these are spectacular not in comparison to the new plastic or new forge world models that are coming out for middle earth these days but i am very much looking forward to seeing a full fellowship painted up in that scenic base where they belong which is a project that's been on the back burner for maybe two decades now. So I think it's about time I got through them all, got it done and had this beautiful piece on my shelf. Mornfang Brown was used to layer all of the axe hafts. Like I said, there's four axes on the miniature. Let's make sure you get in and get all of those done. This is another thing you need to be aware of when painting old metal miniatures. The way my finger rests on the top of his head as I'm painting, this can cause rub damage and actually scrape parts back to the silver. It's a really big pain. So just be careful when you're doing it. I do try my best to keep my fingers only on the painting handles. Wow, flesh was used to highlight that bedroll just a tiny bit. Just a very quick, tidy layer job. And with that, that finishes off another member of the Fellowship. If you're curious about that scenic base I was talking about, this is it. As you can see with the first two members finished, they have pre-determined slots on the base, so they match in perfectly. And they set that scene waiting for the goblins to break down the door and fight in. And a few high-res pictures of Mr. Gimli as of first. And then, of course, him and his best bud together at last, painted up and ready for a few fun games of strategy battle game and there we have it two members of the fellowship down seven to go not quite sure which one i shall do next maybe continue on with the three hunters and finish off with aragon we shall see in next week's video thank you so much for sticking around if you enjoyed it make sure you give it a like subscribe to the channel if for some crazy reason you aren't already doing so as it does make a huge difference and ask me any questions you like in the comments below and i'll get back to each and every one of you guys thank you so much once again thank you to all my patrons I'll see you in next week's video.